in this example problem, we have a bunch of information about 116 different colleges and universities across the United States. We're going to take the role of a high school guidance counselor, apparently skilled in analytics, who has this data file, and they're going to look through and come up with a number. They can advise their students that if they attend one specific university, in our case that's going to be Euphoria State College, what their expected average earnings will be upon graduation. And to do this, they're going to do a progression of the data set that they have. They're going to use the information from these 116 other schools to figure out points like how the cost of the college influences future earnings, how the graduation rate of the college influences future earnings, how the percentage of graduates that pay off their debt influences the future earnings of graduates, and the location, be it city or rural, of the college, how that influences the average post-college earnings of their graduates. So with this, we have the data set of 116 schools. We're also provided with some information about the school that we're looking for, Euphoria State. And at Euphoria State, we are given the average annual cost of attendance, what the college's graduation rate is, what percent of past Euphoria State College graduates are currently paying off their debts. And we know here since one equals city, the Euphoria State is in a urban location. We need to use all this information provided over here in our file and the points we are given about the test college we're looking for, Euphoria State, to project the expected average earnings of a graduate of this college so that this advisor can say to a student that comes in, well, if you go to Euphoria State, you can expect to make X upon graduation. How are we going to do this? Well, we're going to do a huge regression analysis of all this information. Again, there's five data points for each of 116 schools. A little math tells me all in all, it's like 580 data points. I don't feel like analyzing those by hand. Thank goodness Excel allows us to do this very easily. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the data analysis tool pack listed under the data tab. I've installed this thing a few times in the videos. If you don't have it in there already, you're going to have to install it yourself by going to the options under file and grabbing the, the data analysis tool pack. But for us, I'm going to open it up. And right here we have all of the different objects that we could possibly want. And the one that I want is regression, which is going to compare how all of these inputs affect the output, the earnings after they graduate. I'm going to hit OK, and it's going to give me a Y range and an X range to put in here. And I'm going to delete this out because, like I said, it always keeps your last inputs from whatever file you're working on. So what is our Y range? The key rule for regression is that X makes Y change. So in our case, the thing that we're saying changes is the earnings. It changes based upon the cost of attendance, the graduation rate, etc. So average post-college earnings is going to be our Y. I want the entirety of the information that we have in column B in this case. So I'm going to click the first cell and I'm going to actually click the header. I'm going to hit control shift down to highlight all 116 schools. And now I need my X, the things that are going to influence that output, that response variable, if you will. Well, that's all of these things over here. So in the input X range, what I want is all of the information that we have for the four different things that we are keeping track of information for that could influence a graduate's post-college earnings. I want everything in the entirety of the rest of the data set. So C1 to F117. I used row one over here, so I want to make sure that I have labels on, and I do. And then I want to output this somewhere in the sheet so I have the information to work with. Uh, best spot to me is I've provided you with a spot for the answer. Let's put it close to underneath, so I'm going to put it in cell H17, and I'm going to hit OK. And Excel has made me this summary output, and the area that I'm really concerned with is right here. I'm going to change this over to the dollar sign formatting, the currency formatting, if you will, accounting, whatever, because we are talking in numbers right here. What does this column of information right here imply? Well, the intercept is a hypothetical spot where if there wasn't the presence of any of the um, explanatory variables that we would earn. And what this $10,004.97 means that if a student went to a college that was free, had a 0% graduation rate, 
none of their graduates pay off their debt. And since zero equals rural right here was not in an urban location, they would only make $10,004.97. But for each unit of these inputs that we have, it increases their earnings. So the cost of attendance at the school annually for every extra dollar a school costs, this number implies that it's going to increase the future earnings of the graduate by 43 cents. Graduation rate for each additional 1% of students that graduate from that school. It's going to increase the graduate's earnings by $178.10. For every percent of past graduates who are currently paying off their debt, it increases earnings by $141.48. Kind of makes sense. People with more money have an easier time paying off student loan debt. So therefore, we can expect the schools with the highest percentage of graduates paying off debts to have the highest amount of earnings. So there's a, there's a correlation between those two. And then lastly, we have city versus rural. And let me just talk about the ones and zeros right here. This is a qualitative variable. It's not quantitative. You can't measure city in, in numbers. What you can do is convert it to a number by making it binary. So if you have a qualitative variable that's one or the other, a place can't be both city and rural, what you can do is assign a one to one of the conditions and let the other one be zero. So instead of writing city, rural, 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 city, et cetera, right here, so Excel can understand what's going on. I'm gonna convert it to something that's quantitative, a binary, very binary variable by having city equal one and rural equal zero. And with that, it determined down here that a person that graduates from a uh, school that's in a city location, an urban location, makes a little more than $2,500 extra upon graduation. Also makes sense. Cities are more expensive. Jobs in cities pay higher. People that graduate from school in a city would tend to want to stay and work somewhere around that city. So graduates of urban institutions will have higher earnings in the future. How much higher? About $2,500 on average. So now I have the baseline. In the presence of nothing else, we have $10,000 in a smidge of earnings. And then for every input of our X variables I have, I have how much it's going to increase the earnings of a graduate from this school. And what I can do is I can take this baseline and then add to it how much extra a Euphoria State College graduate is expected to earn based upon how much each additional input increases future earnings and what the inputs are for Euphoria State College. So in my formula over here, what I wanted to say is that it's gonna be equal to the baseline, $10,004.97, plus what level of expected earnings we're gonna have for each of these inputs. For each average, uh, for each additional dollar in the average cost of an institution it increases earnings by about 43 cents. But well, we know that the average cost of euphoria is 25,000. So what I'm gonna do is multiply the slope, if you will, the amount of increase that we have, 43 cents per dollar spent annually on the college times Euphoria State's input, which is $25,000 per year. And then I'm just gonna repeat this process all the way down the line. The slope for graduation rate is $178.10 for each percent 1% of students that graduate from the college. Well, Euphoria State graduates 60% of its students. So let's multiply that 178.10 times 60. Over here, we've got, oh, something went awry. Hold on, let me fix that. I don't want you to be N15. I want you to be right there. There we go. And then let's add to that the other two explanatory variables that we have. For each percent of past graduates who are currently paying off their debt, the earnings of expected earnings of a graduate is, goes up $141.48. So let's multiply that by the 80% of past graduates from Euphoria State that are paying off their debt. And then lastly, a uh, institution that is in an urban location in the city has graduates who can expect to earn a little over $2,500 more once they graduate. Well. Euphoria State, because it has a one listed for its uh, input for city rural, means that it is in an urban location, so the graduates can expect to make $2,526.79 more. Multiply those two together. And, oh my goodness, 
Come on, thing. There we go. And then when I put that whole formula in, which is again, just the intercept, the baseline, plus the product of the slope and that particular input matching the slope for each input that we were checking for before we State College. Once I put all that in and I hit enter, I come up with my answer. And my answer is that based upon this information we have, the sample set of 116 different colleges and universities, that a Euphoria State graduate, given that it costs $25,000 a year, that 60% of students graduate, that 80% of the students that do graduate end up paying off their debt, and that it is in a city location that a Euphoria State graduate can expect to earn $45,480.80. So that's the guidance counselor right here. As a student who comes in and says, I'm thinking about going to Euphoria State. Well, now they've got mathematical proof that if they choose to have that be the learning institution that they attend, they can expect upon graduation for their very first job to earn about $45,000 in earnings.